At a very young age, I was interested in science, uh, but when I was five years old, I did things that my parents didn't know what to do with. They sent me to adult schools to learn about radios and electronics. By the time I was seven or eight years old, I could, I could repair or rewire a TV, a radio, an amplifier. And then in 1967, um, I was uh, at the Kresge Auditorium uh, at MIT, and the project was a tic-tac-toe machine, and um, uh, the uh, State Science Fair was sponsored by the Boston Globe, a big Boston newspaper, and they um, and I, I was featured in the article, uh, even though I only came in second. Uh, people were fascinated with the complexity uh, uh, of what I had done. Uh, a short gentleman with a big smile came up to me and asked me a few questions about the project and um, and he said gee I'm we're we're working on a piece of test equipment trying to do something sort of similar to that and we're having some problems is that he he wrote down some sketches and says here's the problem I'm trying to solve and he wrote a logic diagram and I shook my head and I said Bob no no that won't work you got to do it this way and we went back and forth for about 20 minutes and then he said what are you doing this summer countdown approaches zero a moment of enormous tension uh, from Lithuania <laughs> to uh, Siberia and remained unconvinced that he can or should negotiate with Russia. He is the business of the President of the United States to concern himself the Atlantic. And the the defense support program ultimately came about due to uh, the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union that uh, took place after the end of World War II, as well as the development of increasingly powerful uh, nuclear weapons, as well as uh, um, intercontinental ballistic missile technology. So what the developers of BSP wanted to do uh, was to ensure that the United States had as much time as possible to respond to any sort of nuclear attack that the Soviet Union initiated. So it was important for the program directors of DSP and its uh, predecessors to provide the means to detect these missile launches as quickly as possible. May 17, 1967, I officially became an employee of the company. Um, they manufactured uh, the first integrated uh, circuit technology for infrared uh, sensors, but in order to test the detectors, they had to weld on leads and they had a dilemma that they had to cut the plate up into individual detector arrays, but they, they couldn't cut it up and they couldn't test it until they put leads on it, but they, they, if they put leads on it, then they couldn't cut it up. So it was a major technical problem for them. Within two weeks of working on the job, I knew we were doing a satellite, even though back then in 1967 everyone was thinking about the moon. Now the heart of DSP is its infrared detection and tracking capabilities, which captures the heat signatures of missiles and uh, atmospheric explosions. So DSP was really the next logical step in the development of uh, satellite missile warnings. Uh, what was unique about DSP was uh, the establishment of um, a satellite in geosynchronous orbit. And I didn't expect to work on a classified project because I was a high school student, I was 16 years old. Uh, the whole nature of the physics involved with lead sulfide detectors is, is very much black art. It's sort of like your grandmother makes brownies with the recipe in her oven, in her kitchen and uh, everyone has the recipe, but only, only she can make the brownies that taste this very special way. Well, lead sulfide is, is a, a, a simple element uh, chemically, okay? But the way it's made makes all the difference in the world. And oh, if we do this particular step at 200 degrees centigrade rather than 150 degrees centigrade, then the characteristics change in a certain way, okay? Or, or what, what happened uh, after that over a period of a couple of years was that we were able to dramatically improve the sensitivity of the detectors. 
Another thing that the operators discovered was that the sensors were sensitive enough that they could actually uh, detect forest fires and distinguish them from the heat signature of a missile launch. The developers of DSP created a highly sophisticated infrared tracking system within a relatively short period of time uh, using the lessons that have been learned from previous programs. Stuff of Atlantis and the six-man crew on a department of I, I knew when I started on the project and had figured out by week number two being on the job that we were doing uh, infrared launch detection uh, that this was absolutely an essential part of um, technology to make sure that if we, want to, we, if we were going to start a nuclear war that we were absolutely sure uh, that the threat was there. Okay. I had one very strange experience which was we were in the assembly room with the satellite and then I asked one of them and it was around lunchtime so I thought they maybe I asked one of them well can I go over and touch it for good luck and then they said absolutely not and then we were walking in the direction of the exit and they suddenly disappeared so I didn't know what else to do I figured no one's looking I went over and I touched it and I and that was the satellite that finally made it into orbit I think the fact that DSP has operated uh, successfully for as long as it has is, is really a testament to uh, the dedication that the program's leaders and its operators have um, demonstrated uh, during the course of the system's life over the last 45 years. You have to understand that these are uh, satellites that were expected to last uh, only a handful of months to um, just a few years at best um, as operational assets. So this DSP satellite was really, you know, a scientific breakthrough as well as, uh, as a, uh, uh, a defense breakthrough. And um, the, um, the original satellite that became operational um, uh, the detectivity, the sensitivity of the detectors uh, at that point in time far exceeded anything that was expected. Despite the massive leaps in technological capability that have taken place since the first DSP satellite launched in 1970, uh, the system is still providing critical information to warfighters downrange, is still saving lives, and it's still keeping our country safe. But if you think of it in terms of a 40-year life, what what cars on the market, what refrigerators, what anything uh, has a product life like that. And it really says something about doing it right the first time. And, and finally now we have replacements for it. Uh, but it's after, after almost 40, after 40 years we have a redesign, okay? The original design was pretty good. That's the mark of a truly innovative and successful program, and it, it's a credit to uh, all of those people who have been involved in the program since its inception. I'm proud that something that I worked on almost 50 years ago is the some of them that are still up there operational, and the design, the fundamental design didn't, didn't change for a very long period of time.